Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be talking about the next special sense of us that is olfaction. Okay. So within olfaction, we'll be talking about what olfaction is, how basically transduction occur, and what is part. Let's get started. So let's get started. To know olfaction. To know olfaction, we should know what is olfactory membrane, right? So we know olfactory membrane is the membrane which is nothing but a cribriform plate which separates the nasal cavity from the CNS. Fine. So within olfactory membrane, you can see this is the cribriform plate and there is olfactory bulb which is basically from where the nerves are uh, thin pores in the cribriform plate, the, the basically nerves are crossing through. Fine. So this is olfactory membrane. There are 100 millions of olfactory cells present in olfactory membrane having surface area of 2.4 square mm. The mucosal end, if you see below, the mucosal end form a knob-like structure having various cilia, which are hair-like structures present below. Okay, so now let's see what structure, what hair-like structure, what is function of these structures. Olfactory, the olfactory receptors. So these cilia-like structures, these cells are olfactory receptors. Okay, which are basically having nerve endings which here is the uh, cribriform plate having different pores so they cross through those pores and there is olfactory bulb then within olfactory bulb these nerve endings the olfactory receptors and then olfactory nerves olfactory cells having nerve ending they going to synapse on other bipolar cells which are mitral cells now we are so till now we are talking about what are these olfactory cells first of all to know it better what happens next we should know everything about olfactory cells so this is one olfactory cell shown here so olfactory cell is a bipolar cell having toward mucosal and having hair like structure okay so if we zoom one hair like structure there are different uh, channels present on those hair like structures which are the basically playing role as olfactory receptors fine so we have to know what are different uh, basically uh, the transduction occurring at hair level so let's see that okay so on here the for example these are some channels shown on here so what happens basically when we have order when we have any in 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 air okay or in nasal cavity coming in contact with these hairs Okay, so that is going to bind on a G protein coupled receptor present on this hair. Okay, then as it binds, fine, it is going to the alpha unit is dissociate and it, it bind with a uh, enzyme present within the membrane itself that is adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase convert uh, ATP into cyclic AMP and there are some channels which are sodium channels these are cyclic amp dependent sodium channels so as they form, AMP are form they are going to stimulate these sodium channels and they open up which lead to sodium influx so, so fine so sodium influx lead to depolarization and hence the depolarization lead to exocytosis of the neurotransmitter and hence firing of the nerve fine so what are different factors which are going basically affecting this uh, here olfaction how basically odorant bind to these receptors here there are some things uh, which basically affect it so volatile substances so which are volatile substances they are going to bind easily to the receptors and they are going to stimulate olfaction if uh, a substance is water soluble that also makes it easy if it's lipid soluble that can cross the membrane very easily so it also affect the olfactions the strength of stimulus so if a very uh, minute order then it's a bit difficult but if it's strong order then obviously we can sense it very easily then the shape according to the gpcr receptor if the shape is matching then it's going to basically stimulate that receptor if it's carbon chain length then this is also going to affect it okay so things which are things which can actually stimulate the olfactions and how olfaction occur it's the adenyl cyclase pathway cyclic amp mediated depolarization leading to exocytosis of the neurotransmitter then what happens so basically to now let's see the olfactory pathway here i have shown the olfactory receptors 
so this is cribriform plate so they pass through uh, cribriform plate via pores and then they going to synapse on different within within glomerulus so this first thing which comes in pathway is glomerulus Glo within synapse on two they synapse on two type of cells one is the m mitral cell and t tufted cells difference is only mitral cell one mitral cell bind with one cell in glomerulus on the other hand the tufted cells are basically to two or going to two or three glomerulus okay and one more type of cells are present here which are granule cells basically in basically inhibit these mitral cells and uh, basically it they uh, they control different type of orders different type of olfactions that's the olfactory adaptations how they occur when they occur because for some species olfaction is very important for example in animals olfaction is being used uh, for uh, basically search of different foods right so in that sense olfactory adaptation occurring these animals so they have very sensitive power of olfactions now to know the olfactory pathway so different orderants excite olfactory receptors they then bind to glomerulus on either mitral cell or tufted cells right and the basically lateral inhibition occur because of the granule cell also then they are going to follow the optic uh, the olfactory tract fine they ultimately combine to form olfactory tract so can you can you see here there is no thalamus so this is the only pathway which don't involve thalamus here fine so they form olfactory tract so ultimately olfactory uh, epithelium from olfactory or epithelium olfactory receptors go to bind to at glomerulus level to mitral and tufted cells and form olfactory cortex that's it so olfactory cord to olfactory cortex so within olfactory tract there are two division occur medial and lateral divisions so these divisions then supply two different areas of cns and different association areas which are the most important are the pyriform cortex which is nothing but the primary olfactory area then the second is amygdala hippocampus and orbitofrontal cortex now why why we are talking about this why they go to association areas so so this is the same olfactory pathway so from olfactory epithelium go to tufted or mitral cells and form optic olfactory tract then olfactory tract they divide in different and they basically uh, supply different areas now let's see so this this is first which is basically going to tell us which uh, which basically order it is so pyriform cortex fine then second thing is amygdala now why why these areas are important amygdala because there can be some painful uh, experiences of you uh, with some orders right so that amygdala is basically going to activate uh, those experiences and uh, for example fear related to some order right so in that case amygdala also need that signal so that it can awaken us if the order is basically repeated at same level then second uh, thing is hypothalamus so amygdala is also con uh, connected to hypothalamus because every fear response is the reaction occurs uh, with the help of hypothalamus itself the fear fight and flight response okay then other is hippocampus so whatever if it's good experience for example with some flowers with some perfumes if you have good experience if you have bad experience with something if it's fear related then it's going to amygdala uh, otherwise all other emotional experience go to hippocampus so that we can store the memory and later on we can react accordingly so for memory point of view related with those uh, the olfaction the orders hippocampus play part that's why we have signal to hippocampus also and last is orbitofrontal cortex so those area orbitofrontal cortex is also related with different uh, orders okay so that all the all the uh, information can be stored in orbitofrontal cortex Res and respectively whether it's fearful whether it's uh, whether it's enjoyful thing so respectively the decision making power of a, a system is done by orbitofrontal cortex that's why we took decision accordingly fine now let's see uh, 
what happens basically how we can discriminate different orders different type of orders we can see because a lot of orders are present how we can distinguish that so that is discrimination ability to discriminate between different orders so if we talk about taste it was labor line principle fine labor line coding was there that one taste is going to stimulate one receptor but you when you can when you see olfaction then there are num for example order 1 is going to stimulate many receptors order 2 going to stimulate many receptors and order 3 same so there are one receptor is having many uh, orders okay it can have many orders and can have various uh, level of firings according to that so it's not about uh, basically one receptor one neuron rule in fact there are different at the level of excitation different level of uh, responses of receptors with a different type of orders fine so what things are affecting basically so around 10000 volatile chemicals we can sense 10 to 5000 orders we can sense and it's the amino acid sequence which vary for specific orders so one neuron one receptor and many orders can sense that set of neuron and receptor receptors are they they are able to turn over within 6 to 8 weeks and obviously they decline with age because of the degeneration of pathway then sensitivity of those receptors depend on the receptor activation because of those uh, stimulants the individual receptors they, it respond differently with different orders and different degree of excitation occur fine and we have basically covered how different factors volatility water solubility lipid solubility and strength of stimulus the shape and carbon chain length of orders they can affect this discrimination part fine so in this video we have talked about what is olfaction how which are different cells which are going to sense that orders how transduction occur and what is the olfactory pathway fine please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos thank you so much for watching